In this video, I am going to walk you through the steps I took repairing this damaged book I recently purchased at Target. It was ripped along the hinge. I ended up cutting the end page, fixing the damage, and gluing in a new hinge. So let's get into this. Welcome to Solitary RPG. In this video, we're going to repair this book. I purchased this book from Target. I got it at a great price because the back hinge is ripped. And I thought it would make a good video. And it's also a, a good book. It's got some great charts that I can use for my games. So initially, I thought I would remove the entire text block, fix the, re the damaged area, reinsert the text block, but I think I'm going to change gears and try something a little bit different. Uh, one of the challenges with putting in a text block is making sure that the pages or the text block goes in lined up so you get this nice lip going all the way around your book. And you, you can see this on any hardback book that you own. And if you don't put it in correctly, well, <laughs> that becomes a problem. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to repair the book one side at a time. So I'm going to start with the, the damaged area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this side of the text block, take a look at all the damaged areas, kind of get a better idea of how this book was constructed, and then fix the damage and then re-glue uh, the back pages in to hinge it all back together and then after that's done i all i can do is assume that this paper is just not very strong so i might want to fix the front we'll see i don't know yet if that's what i want to do but i want to take the back half apart take a look at it and see what's going on so i, I guess there's no other stalling i could possibly do we need to cut cut the book and uh for some of you, this might be a little too much. The way you want to do it is very carefully because you do not want to cut your pages. So these back pages, this is a signatured book. So that's a bunch of pages folded together. It's all either sewn together or glued together. I won't know until I cut the book open to see how they actually assembled this book. But we want to be very careful not to cut those pages. We're going to play with an X-Acto blade and there's, there's, there's no real method to the madness. You don't want to cut too deep and end up cutting this and then you've just cut your page off. So what you want to do is you just want to do a nice light cut and hopefully you got a sharp blade that will go through the paper, but not too far through. To cause any problems so as you can see I've, I'm starting to to free it up a little bit and this is just a very nerve-wracking thing because we are taking a book apart so so We're going to kind of stretch and cut now. All right. And that was ugly as sin, but it worked. So now we got to look at our book. So they used a paper on the inside. And this is just a book that's completely glued together. So what I'm going to do from here is I want to remove this paper or just pull it up, I guess would be the easiest way to do it, and separate it from the hinge. I know this isn't the most riveting video, but we're gonna have to peel that up a little bit. Now this, this is probably just an industrial glue here that they've used you can use heat to remove some of this. Um, you know, you can, it can, it can work. I've just pulled it up. 
I know it's not probably the best method to do this, but I'm kind of going on this that, uh, you know, we're going to fix this the best we can without using specialty tools. So we can see the damage here. So my way of repairing this is going to be to just get a piece of uh, paper that I would use, like a thick piece of cardstock. And I'm just going to glue that in this hinge to reinforce it. And looking at everything else, um, I don't know if there's a lot anything else I would really want to do. I don't need to remove this end page if I don't want to. I think I can leave it because it's got a pretty good glue joint. Like the glue is, it's like an eighth of an inch down here. So what I'm going to have to do is clean up the mess that I made by cutting this. Um, apparently my exacto blade wasn't very sharp, so that kind of sucked. My goal is, so I want to save it to where I don't have to put anything on the outside. I don't want to put any book binding tape on this. I want to save the original um, outside cover as best I can. So I want to try to fix this from the inside. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick update. So a couple things took place. First, I got a new, a new razor blade and a new knife because that little X-Acto knife was terrible. Uh, but I just cut, got a good cut right here uh, on that paper because when I glue in the new hinge, I want to make sure it's gluing to cardboard, not to another piece of paper. And I'm not going to do a full end page replacement. I'm probably going to end up just coming out three or four inches uh, onto the back cover to glue in a new uh, end page. So I'm just I still want to keep a lot of this art, but I'm just going to do a replacement. Uh, so what we're doing here, so we got our hinge. So what I did is I got a piece of just scrapbooking cardstock or, you know, whatever style paper that's used in scrapbooking. And I cut it to the width of the hinge. And what we want to do is we just want to glue this in place now. But I also had to cut some cardboard or chipboard. Um, so that it will take up the space. So this way, when I put it in my book press, it puts pressure on the piece of paper and it gets a nice flat glued surface. But my chipboard just isn't thick enough. So I'm gonna have to use two pieces and I didn't have a piece long enough to make the cover. So I've got multiple pieces. So what I'll do is end up putting all this in uh, the, the hinge and then put my book press in place and everything should be just fine. I think I came up with why this book might have gotten damaged and it could have been as simple as a little bit of a shift when the book was being manufactured. I'm going to zoom in so I can kind of show you what I think took place. So when you flatten out this hinge, so let's put a piece of cardboard in. And we've got our hands flattened out. And you look at the paper here, it just it doesn't quite go all the way to make contact with the other side. And it's almost like you have to shift it to make that happen. So if you want to line it up, you got to kind of shift it, which ends up creating a bubble on the hinge. And Maybe that was just a little, maybe it just shifted, the cover just shifted slightly in the manufacturing process. And maybe that caused too much pressure. And then maybe the, the book got damaged or got like, like during shipping, got dropped or something and it just ripped it. Um, so just kind of odd, but that is my, my thought process. Cause I've tried to stretch this paper out and get it to fit. And you, if you really stretch it, you can get it to fit, but then it doesn't, it doesn't go down, so I don't know. Maybe that's what happened. So maybe it's just a a default of a, a damaged book. Like it's just it's not all of their product line. Maybe it's just this particular one. The cover shifted slightly during manufacturing, and that's all it takes. Just a slight shift, and 
that's what caused this book to, to give way. So we're going to get back to repairing it. I'm going to go get this set up on my, my table in my hobby room. I can't show that on video because I don't have a camera and uh, like, it's not set up for recording. It's part of my house. Uh, so anyways, I, I, what I have to do is I have to lay down some parchment paper on my table. Then I'm going to glue in the piece of chip cardstock. Then I'm going to take my spacers, put those in, and then we're going to get this all pressed in my book press. And hopefully, you know, fingers crossed that fixes that. And then we'll come back and fix all of this. And then we'll put in my little modified end page. So that way we can um, put this all back together again. And it will be as good as kind of new. So I'll be back. So it is the next day and you can see I got the book glued together. I got this little piece of paper in here to reinforce the spine. So this is not going to be perfect in any stretch of the imagination, but it should hold together. And you'll notice how I got the crease in my hinge here um so what what i had to do and i forgot to record this is after i put the paper in put my my spacers in and put it in my press this hinge was flat so i gave it a couple hours to set up and dry and then what i did is i closed the book and i put just a this is a this is for shish kebabs. It's just a little round rod. Put that underneath the spot where the the spine is between the cardboard for the spine and the cardboard for the cover. Put my book press on it. And what that did is it reformed the hinge here so that it was no longer flat. But you want to make sure you do this a couple hours after the glue is set up while the glue is still a little wet uh, and not 100% dry so that it will reform and then it'll harden up and then you'll have a good um, spine. So yeah, this is where we're at so far. So the next step, so I'm gonna have to cut these excess off, which is no big deal. So the next thing I need to do, um, I don't really care too much about this page, this very last page that says your GMs. And I really wanna keep this piece of end paper in my book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some additional glue on the page and just glue this down a little bit better. Okay, so last night I glued the end page down and I took out a big section because what I'll end up doing is the end page that I glue in is probably going to go out about four inches on either side. So we got that done. But what I want to do now is I removed the backing material that was used on this book. Uh, when I took the cover off, it kind of uh, came loose. And then when I was messing around with it, I just decided to rip it all off. And with doing that, I kind of discovered where some of that noise was coming from, especially at the front of the book. And that's because the glue here has not dried along here. And the way we're going to fix that is I need to glue something on this back here. So I'm just going to glue another piece of paper down. And what I did is I just folded a piece of cardstock in an L shape. We will slip that in this between the signature and the cover and i'll glue this all down in place and that should hopefully remove that sound that we're hearing so it's pretty much what i'm going to do now and this is a pretty going to be pretty straightforward i'm going to try to keep this all on camera but you all know how that goes um it never goes as planned I'm just going to give a nice, healthy amount of Elmer's glue. And I just use Elmer's glue for these projects. I don't get 
Uh, there are better glues. I do have some book binding glues and stuff, but I use that for other projects. I just, for this one, I'm just using Elmer's glue. And I'm giving it a little bit of time to set up. Make sure I got a good amount on the book. And then we'll just slip this into place. Just like that. Make sure it's nice and straight. And there it is. So what I need to do now is just set this off to the side and just let it dry. I'm not going to be able to put it in any kind of a book press or anything. Uh, it's just going to have to uh, sit out. So I might just sit here and uh, rub it back and forth for a while. <laughs> so, um, But yeah, this just needs to dry now. And after this dries, we'll get to work on putting in that hinge on the back and trying to wrap this project up. But as you can see, um, it's all coming along nicely. And I did uh, remove the excess that was hanging over on the piece of paper that I put in between here. So yeah, I think this should fix that creaking noise that was going on. Like, it's still there when I'm pretty rough with it, but I shouldn't be able to open the book up that much. So hopefully this resolves that issue. Sometimes when you hear that noise, it just bugs me to hear that noise in a book. And uh, so if I can fix it, we'll fix it. If it doesn't fix it, well, we tried. And we'll just move on from there. Okay, so I glued in the new cover along the spine. And it dried quite nicely. And I also worked on trying to get rid of that kind of breaking noise of that sticky sound when I opened the cover and it seems like uh, we were able to get rid of that for the most part. It's not 100% gone, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. So the next step is we need to glue in the hinge and pretty much wrap up this project. So once we attach the hinge, everything should be good. As you can see right here, this is going to always show a scar and I could take a marker like a Sharpie and I can fill that in or I can just leave it there as a reminder at one time this book was broken and we fixed it. I haven't decided yet, but we're going to do is we're going to start gluing in the hinge and the way we're going to do this is I've already pre-cut my piece of paper. I'm not going to do full end pages for this repair. I'm just going to do a small little hinge inside of here, keeping some of the original material in here so that it still shows through. For the most part on a book, um, yes, the end page, this is one big piece of paper. And that's what holds everything together. That holds the tech, text block in and keeps everything together. And it's only got a slight glue uh, seam right here so you can tell it's a little bit it's just a maybe a eighth of an inch quarter inch seam right here glued on to the text block and the rest of this is glued down but the majority of the strength is all right through here holding everything together the rest of this is just decorative uh, hiding the cover pages and all that kind of stuff so we can repair this well in theory we should be able to repair this by just putting in a small hinge and everything should be good. Um, I'm going to want to glue the whole thing down. So that's one of the reasons why I added some additional glue to this back page is I want to glue the whole thing down. But to start with, all we're going to do is put down a small bead of glue right here and we're going to attach this piece of paper and then we'll let that dry then I'll come back and glue it down the rest of the way the reason for that is if I start putting glue all over the place on the paper everything is going to get wet it's going to get sticky and if I make any mistakes putting this in it's going to be a problem 
because we need to make sure we get this all the way up to the edge. If we're too far this way or too far inwards, uh, what that can do is cause some problems when the book is opening. Now this is the back of the book, so it's probably not gonna get open from the back that often, but we still wanna do it right. But we'll just get this glued down and then I'll give it like an hour to dry and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll glue down the rest of the paper. As you notice, I went, I'm going over with this piece of paper and because this is a repair job, what I want to do is once this is all glued together is I will trim this to size to make sure I've got everything lined up nicely. So that way when I glue it down on the other side, it should all line up nicely here. Uh, making a nice good repair and all this is is um, scrap scrapbook paper I get those 12 by 12 sheets of it it's a pretty good paper whenever I'm gluing in my end pages or anything I start with just putting down a piece of like scrap paper this was an extra character sheet for a fabulous game called sandworm but now it is going to keep my line smooth and clean. And the reason we do this is this way the glue only goes on the piece of paper where I want it. If I was to try to do this with my finger, uh, I'm gonna get an uneven line. And then when I go down to glue, glue the rest of it down, it's just gonna create more problems. So it's best just to use a piece of paper as a guide while you're putting down your glue. And this is what we're going to do. And then we will put down some glue. I know this isn't the most exciting uh, type of video to watch, but it's kind of important because I can use this piece of paper to wipe off the excess. And I'm just getting glue on the spot in the book where I want it. I can peel this away, throw it away, clean my hands off. Now I'm just dealing with that little spot with glue. I can make sure I get my hinge in nice and tight where I want it, making sure it goes all the way to the edge like that. Now what I'll end up doing is putting this in my press my little makeshift book press and I'll let it set for an hour and then I'll come back and I will um, glue in the rest of it. So once I get this side glued down, we'll come back, we'll talk about the other side and we'll finish up this project. All right. So it's the next day. The uh, hinge that I'm gluing in is all dry and it's completely across the whole section is glued down and everything's good um, I got a little wrinkling in the paper uh, it's just the moisture it means I, I didn't get enough of the moisture wicked out of it um, I forgot to put a piece of regular paper in here to kind of absorb some of that moisture uh, it happens, but it's the back end. It's it's the back page um, that we're fixing, so I'm not too terribly upset about that. So from here, what we need to do is we need to mark on the back cover exactly how far this piece of paper is going to go out. Because when we glue this piece down, we want to make sure we get no glue in this hinge. Uh, what you'll notice with a, a hardback book is when you open them, the hinge, this is the hinge, it's not secured in any way, and it moves with the book. So, so we want to make sure this gets no glue. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to close the book, uh, have it all lined up the way we want it. And because I left these, the hinge paper long, like it's not cut to the size of the book, that's going to give me an opportunity to just mark where they are. I'm using just a, a thin micron uh, marker. And I can just mark 
the the page open it back up and i can see my mark so i know i just want to put glue from here to here and i don't want to go over and what we'll do is the same trick we did when we were putting in this end page is we'll just hold down a piece of paper like so because uh, we already know this is the end here and we'll just put our glue down and everything will be good um, I don't need to mark it all the way and the reason I went with a dark marker is so that doesn't really stand out um, I could have used like silver or something else but then it would have stood out um, so that's done so what we're gonna want to do before we glue it down is we want to cut that end paper off and the way we're going to do that is we're just going to flip the book around. I got everything in place. I'm just going to take my razor blade. I'm just going to make some light passes on the paper here to cut it off. It's not very hard. And if you, if you go a little bit too much, too hard, and you get a little bit into the... Um, the cover well we're going to be putting glue down so that will cover all of that up and i'll show you in just a second what, what will happen here like you can see i cut uh some of the um, book material but because this is going to lay there that's going to be my cut line i'll get glue in that it'll secure it everything in theory should be good what i'm going to do now is i've got my marks I'm going to get my Elmer's glue. We're just going to put some glue down and then I'll shut the cover, put it in my book press, let it sit for the day, dry, and I can come back and show the finished product. All right. So before I glue, I am going to just make sure I'm good and lined up. I'm happy with where I'm at. Now they do make book binding glue. Uh, it's, it's, different than PVA glue. It's got a little bit, I, I believe, more silicone. It's still white. It still feels like and acts like Elmer's glue, but it does have different properties. It's more inclined for bookbinding. I have some, I've used it, but I'm trying to teach the average person how to be a bookbinder and by using the stuff that you have access to. And the Elmer's glue comes in a couple different types. Like you got school glues and, um, hard you know stronger bonding glue just experiment with it this is just the like multi-purpose glue uh stronger formula dries fast blah 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 uh you might want to experiment with it uh as if you're book binding all right so we want to go all the way to the piece of paper that we have that way the hinge stays down and just go to our cut line as best we can and then get it down in this cardboard this cardboard is where most of the strength it needs to be for this project because this is where the hinge is going to be uh, held down the most and will take the most abuse i am getting a little bit of glue on that hinge so we will just wipe that off um, i'm going to put a little bit more glue right through here because this is going to be the strongest part. The rest of this, it's just going to be held down. Uh, it's just going to hold down the, the book. So, all right, that's done. And you can see the reflection. That's why you use that piece of paper. So basically, I'm, I'm going to pick up the book from the spine in the back put that towards the spine of the text block, shut the book, give it a press down, open it back up, see how it looks. It's really hard to show on camera, but it looks beautiful. Sorry, book got in the way. We're just gonna press that down. And now I'm just gonna go put this in my book press and then we will come back after it drives and look at the finished result all right so here we are with the finished product and 
This whole thing started because there was damage right here. The book was ripped. And what we did is we ended up putting in a new hinge back here. You know, we cut it. We redid everything. And I think we fixed that crackling noise when we opened the book with that repair that we did. So is this the perfect repair for this book? Probably not. But this was an experiment that I was doing because I've never done something like this before. And I'll be curious to see how this holds up. I think the only thing we got left to do is to peel this annoying, why do we put stickers on books at stores? Um, I, I, I don't know why we do this, but we do it. And they're not always easy peel stickers to get off. But we are going to get this sticker off. And that will make this officially done. And there it is. So we are done. I've been waiting this whole video, this whole week as I've been working on this. I've been waiting to peel that sticker off as the final piece to the puzzle. But yeah, so there it is. Um, my first book repair. And I think I did okay. Um, everything's lined up good. I don't think I need to do anything with the front. I think the front's fine. Uh, that crackling noise and I'm you know how the damage happened I, I don't know for sure if it shifted a little bit during the manufacturing process um, but I couldn't get that paper line up so something was weird there but now everything's good it is a little wrinkly you can see some wrinkling um, that's just one of the downsides with you know using some of the glue if you don't get uh, any kind of absorption inside of there with paper um, a lot of it's good, but some of it's pretty bad. Plus, you got to remember, we peeled that end paper off. So this could also just be damaged in the card, the chipboard from when I peeled it. But here on this side, this is just moisture damage. So nothing I can do with that. But everything else looks like it's sealed down quite nicely. So that was the repair. Now I can actually go through and read the book. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, it's been sitting on my desk all week. There, are, there are some good charts in this book for world building, and that is something that I'm working on right now. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day. Bye.